Hey everyone, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. We're the world's leading organization of home and commercial property inspectors. And that's at nachi.org. And this is an InterNACHI webinar. They're free, online, live, and open to everyone. And we talk about home inspection topics, how to perform a home inspection, how to market yourself as a home inspector, how to conduct a successful home inspection business, all kinds of things. Feel free to chat if you are registered and attending live. You have a chat feature, you have a Q&A feature. Feel free to use those and we'll get through all the comments and questions that you have. And if you're interested in attending another live webinar, go to nachi.org slash webinars, nachi.org slash webinars and register for any webinar. They're all video recorded. Everyone who registers for a webinar gets the link to the video recording to watch later. Right now, we're gonna talk about this topic, how to write your own inspection report narratives. What's a narrative? I hate that word. It's really a sentence. It's like a group of sentences, it's like a paragraph or a phrase. A narrative is something that you use as a home inspector to communicate your observations. And you put those narratives in an organized fashion in a report and you give your report to your client. So we're going to talk about how to write, build your own narratives, sentences, paragraphs, observations in written form. How do you write your own? Or you could borrow someone else's. So we have a ton of resources for you to complete this task. In order to be a successful home inspector, you have to write a report. You're going to write in within your own words or borrow someone else's, or maybe it's a combination of the two. And if you're a member of InterNACHI, you have uh, a whole world of opportunities and resources, free membership benefits. And I'm going to go over the following resources for you so that you can learn how to write your own inspection report narratives. And I don't care if you're brand new, haven't written one word in a report, or you've been doing this for 10 years and you're a master inspector writing reports. The one thing you always do is you improve the way you communicate every day. So while you're inspecting, you're always trying to make your observations, your written observations better. They should be easy to understand. Easy to, your reports should be very easy to read, not complicated to read. Easy to read in organized sections and chapters. And clear to understand. You shouldn't be using any kind of confusing terminology or long-winded paragraphs. Is the gutter clogged with leaves? All right, just give me like five words. Don't give me an entire paragraph about cleaning the gutters. Use InterNACHI's home maintenance book to fill in all that home maintenance stuff that you don't want to put in your report. Keep your report concise, clear, and easy. Concise, short. Use InterNACHI's home maintenance book to fill in. Put all that home maintenance information in your report. Attach it. You can contractually attach it to your inspection report, by the way. You can ask your client to read the home maintenance book, by the way, in the, your agreement. Not only re the report and the summary, but also the maintenance book. <laughs> and you, they agree. You've given them a ton of information without writing your reports. Let's talk about chat GBT. Let's talk about inspecting, describing, and reporting in relation to the standards of practice. I have a free inspection checklist software for you to use. We have inspection checklists. You get the checklist and you that's the that's the starting point of any report narrative. You have to write your report narratives in the past tense. It helps reduce liability. We'll go over that. We have a course on defect recognition. You have to look and find defects, right? If you find a defect and you consider it to be a major material defect, you got to put that in a report. How do you do it? We have a course from internetchi.edu, Internetchi School, the only home inspector college. It's a tuition-free college. 
defect recognition report writing course. We have InternetG report narrative samples. We talk about how to write report narratives, talk about quoting building code. We're going to talk about, well, should you write your own report narratives? Maybe you should just use someone else's. We're going to give you samples of inspection reports to look at. These are certified master inspectors who have volunteered, who have uncopyrighted, who have released their reports so that you can copy paste from them. We're going to take a look at DDID, DDID, Describe, Determine, Implication, Direction. And then we're going to give you suggested language for your inspection report. Okay. So use the Q&A button to ask questions and feel free to copy paste anything that I say or have written here. No copyrights reserved for this webinar. If you're not a member of InternetGee, man, you're missing out because you have to, in order to be successful, you have to leverage systems and resources that you can't possibly produce yourself. And that's what InternetGee is. A whole world of resources are available to you. If you want to give us a try, and if you've never been a member ever, if you're not a member, and if you've never been a member, go to natchee.org slash trial, T-R-I-A-L, and enter webinar month, one word, for a free one month trial. If you want a big discount, 50% discount on your first year membership, if you're a non-member, you've never been one before, same URL, natchee.org slash trial, and enter the code webinar. Again, Look for that .edu. That means it's an accredited college. Internet G School is recognized by a national accrediting agency, recognized by the U.S. Department of Education, a real college, tuition-free college, internetg.edu. Don't go anywhere else. There's also a lot of talk about websites. Not only inspection reports, but websites. It's expensive if you're paying $700 for a managed website. Man, home inspectors... If you get your home inspector website designed by InternetG's official vendor for inspector websites, there are no management fees. There are no other fees. There's nothing. There's a one-time design fee and that's it. Then you pay for hosting like Wix. You pay Wix about 16 bucks a month, $16 a month. That's like 50 cents a day. Take care of your overhead, especially in this economy and get a great website with SEO. Inspector website builder, or go to natchee.org slash website for details. I don't know if you know anything about chat GBT. I really didn't, but I've got three daughters and they forced me to learn a few things. So let's go to chat GBT. Have you heard of it? Okay. So it turns out that you can just drag a picture in chat and Tell it to uh, tell me what's wrong in this picture. Okay, so I dragged, what did I drag? I drug, I drugged, I dragged this picture here. Okay, now it's gonna write me essentially a, an inspection report narrative. So you click go. Now it's thinking, takes a few seconds and I don't know if you can see it. So I'll, I'll try to read it as it um, spits out a narrative for you. So I asked, you know, this computer thing to look at what is wrong with this, um, what is wrong in the picture, essentially, and ChatGBT, if it's working, is going to tell me. So in the image provided, there appears to be a downspout that's improperly discharging water near the foundation of the house. This can be a significant concern for several reasons. One, water damage to the foundation. When water is not directed from the house, it can lead to excessive moisture to the foundation. Over time, this can cause erosion, foundation, sediment, and structural damage. Potential for water infiltration or intrusion. Water pooling next to the base of the home can seep into the basement or crawl space, leading to water and interior damage, mold growth, and poor indoor air quality. Three, splashback damage. Water hitting the ground directly can cause splashback damage to the siding, which can lead to deterioration. Soil erosion. Not... So if you're wondering, uh, what should I say? You can ask this, I don't even know what it is, open AI uh, for artificial intelligence to write something about it. Let's do it again. That was kind of fun. Um, stop. It's still going. Blah, blah, blah. You don't want to, you do not want to 
just keep going like that. So that's kind of fun. I would just have a lot of fun doing this. Let's see, how about these? So you can upload more than one picture into chat GBT. Um, tell me oh, what's wrong with this TPR discharge pipe and uh, refer to relevant relevant um, IRC code. So uh, this is a couple of inspection pictures of mine. And I took a picture of the TPR on the hot water tank and it's discharging into a bucket. So it says, the image depicts a temperature pressure relief valve discharge associated with water in the system. The potential issues discharge is shown photos along with the references. TPR valve has pipe discharging into a bucket according to IRC 2018 P2803.6.1. The discharge pipe should discharge to the floor to an indirect waste receptor or to the outdoors where the discharge will not cause, cause injury or structural damage. Discharging into a bucket is not acceptable termination point as it would not allow hot water to... Blah, 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 blah. No visible air gap. Uh, material and size of the pipe. This is pretty cool. Like you can do your own uh, research, right? And have a little fun with, um, you know, it, it's kind of neat because like internet courses from the Home Inspector College we have, it refers directly to code. Building code is referred to in, in the plumbing course. I would take the, the plumbing course, right? And the hot water discharges, uh, the hot water tank TPR discharge is you know, there's 14 requirements for the TPR discharge pipe alone, 14 requirements. You know, you can add those into a checklist and then bring those into your report software. And then if you see one of the 14 that are wrong, you can just simply click it and that pops that observation into your report. So you can use this to look up code, refer to code. Wow, this is really cool. So that's a live use of ChatGBT. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I'm not sure how accurate it would be, so don't rely on it that much. Um, and you can just upload pictures if you want. You can just upload this picture of a garbage disposal and just tell me what this is. You can just say, tell me what this is. And this allows you to have some, you know, it's like a creative exercise where you can try to figure out, oh, that's an interesting way of describing that, right? Let's take a look at how Home inspectors inspect, describe, and report. In relation to the standards of practice, the standards of practice require home inspectors to do these three things. You have to inspect, you have to describe in words, and you have to report. So what does that mean? Let's go to natcha.org slash SOP. Let's go to the standards of practice. And I'll show you where those things, where those three things always pop up. What are they? Inspect, describe, report. Let's go to the roof section. Here it is. So here's the standards of practice, section 3.1, roof. And it says, the inspector shall inspect from ground level or the eaves, the following components related to the roof, right? The inspector shall describe, inspect, describe the roof, uh, the type of roof covering materials, right? And the inspector shall report as in need of correction, observed indications of active roof leaks. Inspect describe and report. Let's go to the next section, exterior. Exterior, the inspector has to inspect these things in the exterior, right? You have to describe what? The exterior wall covering materials and you have to report what? This defect. So if you're wondering, how, what should I actually do? What is the minimum that I am required to do according to the home inspection standards of practice, right? It's inspect, describe, and report. Those are the, if you want to exceed that, obviously you're allowed to exceed the minimum standards required by the standards of practice. You have to inspect, describe, and report. There's not a lot in there. The inspecting is difficult, right? There's a lot to inspect. Look at the exterior. Let's look, go back to the top and go to electrical. Let's go to the electrical part, right? Here's what you have to inspect in the electrical part. It's huge. All this stuff. So what you do is under inspect, you have little open check boxes that say, I inspected the service drop. Service drop. And if you did during the inspection, you check it 
And that pops that sentence into the report. The next would be, I inspected overhead service conductors in the attachment point. And if you check it, that sentence pops into your report. The third, do you understand? So you can have sentences based upon the home inspection standards of practice under inspect. It requires you to inspect. Hey, why not put a sentence for everything that you inspected? Past tense. The inspector shall describe. Let's put those two things, right? Net, open check boxes, ready? And an inspector shall describe the main service disconnect amperage rating if labeled. So if I'm inspecting an electrical panel and it's 200 amps, I'm gonna take a picture, two fingers, 200 amps at the main electrical panel, boop, and I'm type 200 and pop that sentence in my report. Why? Because I'm required by the standards of practice to do so. That's the minimum I'm required to do. I can do a lot more if I wanted to, but the other thing I'm required to do to describe in my inspection report, according to the standards of practice, this has to be in. This is why we're starting with the standards of practice. This is the absolute minimum that you have to have in your report. Describe the type of wiring observed. Wow, that's easy. So have a list of Go to the electrical inspections course of InterNACHI. We have a list of all of the different types of electrical wiring. Put them all in there. And whatever you observe, you click it, it goes in the report. And you have to report as a need of correction these deficiencies and defects. So have them in your report. If you ob observe them, you pop it in your report. This is the absolute minimum that, minimum that you have to do. You're required to do this according to the standards of practice. Okay. So start there, inspect, describe, report. Make sure you're doing what you're required to do according to the standards of practice. Here's a free inspection checklist software. Not really for clients, it's really for practicing, but steal everything in this software, right? That InterNACHI made for you and put it in your report. I'll show you what I mean. Log into your InterNACHI dashboard, click certification, then click submit for mock inspection reports. Log in, certification, submit for reports. Let's do it. Let's go to, oh, I'll just do it again. Go to any natchi.org page, top right corner, log in, go to your dashboard, go to certification on the left. Maybe I'll, I'll do this. Let's highlight so you can follow my mouse. How's this work? Does this work better like that? Click certification. And then right here, where is it? Uh, Right there, see it? four mock inspection reports. And you get to InterNACHI's free inspection checklist software that you use for practice. I wouldn't send this report to any client. This morning, I started uh, an inspection report at 123 Washington Street in New York. Let's take a look, see what it is. Let's continue. There's my client, there's the date, and I continue to the roof section. Okay. As per the standards of practice, the following items must be inspected or labeled not inspected with a valid reason. Okay, so the roof covering materials, um, I inspected the roof and I did not find any defects. There, so I just click it, right? Now that sentence will be put in the inspection report. I inspected the roof covering materials, no defects were observed. But maybe I, I did find some defects. Maybe the gutters, right? Here's the gutters. What's the next thing I, do I have to inspect? Inspect, describe, report. Inspect, I'm re required to inspect the gutters. Uh, I had a minor defect. What was it? Um, there's some stuff in the, there's a, oh, there's, have you ever seen a football? There's a football in the gutter. Okay. And you can drop a, a picture in there as well. Let's drop a picture. Um, remember that picture? Boom, and it goes right into the inspection checklist software that we have. So you inspect all these things, right? And you get to describe. This is, this is what you are required, according to the standards of practice, to describe. Now, if you wanted to go beyond that, have many other things that you can describe, right? Just keep adding to it. What are you required to describe in your inspection report? What is the type of narrative that you're supposed to have in your inspection report, according to the standards of practice? The type of roof covering materials. So I observed the asphalt shingles, okay? And according to the standards of practice, what are you supposed to report? Did you observe any indications of active roof leaks? No, okay, done and go to exterior. That's it, I'm done with the entire roof part of my inspection report. That's the minimum. Now, obviously your client is probably gonna wanna see some extra pictures and stuff like that. You, again, 
you can use this as the minimum starting point for writing a very easy to read, clear to understand inspection report based upon minimum required, absolute minimum required narratives that are supposed to be in the report. Okay. That's a really cool free inspection checklist software to use. We have other checklists at this URL. These are very long URLs. Feel free to email me or anybody on staff for my slides. I'll put it on the recording, um, uh, the page at, on the Internet webinar for the recording, and I'll have it there. But if you go to this URL, natchiorg slash home hyphen inspection hyphen checklist, I love this page. I love this page because here's the basic home inspection checklist in a PDF form. It's also in Spanish and, and Word documents, so you can edit it. So you open up, sorry, did I go too fast? Home inspection checklist, right? Here's the basic home inspection checklist that's based upon that software that we just played with. You click the PDF in English or in Spanish, or um, you can do a, do a Word document. And in here, there are four definitions of defects that you could use or not. It's up to you. But what are you supposed to put in the report? Basically, you're supposed to put not all that home maintenance stuff, let InterNACHI's home maintenance book do the talking. You're supposed to put in the defects, really. So what kind of defects are there? You can use these as a way to describe the types of defects that you find during a home inspection. You don't have to, but they are defined in InterNACHI's glossary. Material defect, major defect, minor defect, cosmetic defect. They're all defects, but a stain on the carpet, that's cosmetic. A minor defect, that's like something the homeowner can fix, dirty air filter. A major defect is something a professional is needed, like a roof, hole in a roof, right? A material defect is that's something major, significant. Someone's going to get hurt or have an invert adverse impact on the value of the home. Let's scroll down. This is fantastic. This is a great way to start your narratives, right? Or just improve them. Maybe you're just so robust. Uh, everyone is like a hundred words. Again, like, you know, just tell me that the there's a football in the, in the gutter. Don't go on and on and on about a little, 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 little bunch of terminology. Stick to being concise, easy to read, clear to understand. Here it is. Look, I inspected the roof covering materials from, and you click it, and that's your sentence. That sentence should be in every report. Or this one, the roof covering materials were not inspected because they were what? Inaccessible, unsafe, not present, not within the scope of the home inspection. Here's another great short sentence. I inspected the roof gutters or inspected the gutters. From where, right? Because that is in the standards of practice. Tell me from where you inspected the gutters or the gutters were not inspected because of these reasons. Let's skip down a little bit. Describe. Here's a great narrative. The type of roof covering materials I observed can be described as, and then you have a list to choose from. And that sentence can be selected and popped into your report. I observed indications of an active roof leak, correction isn't recommended, or I observed indications of a material defect or a major defect or a minor, and you can add it. These, this checklist here in PDF form is a great way to get your narratives concise. I don't, I have, I did inspections for 12 years. No one ever complimented me on how many words I used in my report. It was just the opposite. Real estate agents, homeowners, they needed a, a short summary, concise. What do I do? Give me a things to do list. I need to fix stuff. Give me that list. But if you've ever been dragged into a small claims court, I have a few times, you want a robust enough report written in good, using good grammar. I can barely speak. I can write better than I speak. And um, that meets the minimum standards. If you're required to say something in your report, you better put it in the report. That's the whole point of this resource, getting inspection checklists. Oh, and I wanted to show you the furnace one. So there's another one. Here's the gas furnace checklist. This is a really great checklist. Ah. Oh, you know, and it has the PDF just like before, but it goes through all the things that, you know, you should be checking, right? You look at the switch, it's electrical box, it's plate cover and wire. So 
I you could use this as I looked at the cabinet, the cabinet fasteners and the cabinet panels. I looked at the required clearance, combustion and service around the cabinet, right? And it tells you some notes. You can put these notes in your software to remind you about the minimum clearance, the general, in general, the minimum clearance of at least a couple of inches around the workspace, around the furnace cabinet, right? Okay, let's go back to this one. There's a, a radon system inspection checklist. Do you ever perform a home inspection and you bump up against the radon fan outside? Well, you immediately turn around to your client and you say the three magic words. What are they? While I'm here. You know, while I'm here, like I'm doing a home inspection, but while I'm here, look, you want me to inspect this radon mitigation system? It should be tested every year. Has When's the last time it was checked for the most recent updates? I mean, if this was installed 10 years ago, it's out of date. It probably has some components. Maybe it's not even discharging properly, things like that. So while I'm here, how would you inspect a radon mitigation system that you bump into during a typical home inspection? Use a checklist. Upload the checklist in your report. The checklist is written in a way that if you select a certain checklist item, it becomes a sentence in your report. Get it? So you got the standards of practice, you have checklists, and you select things to put in your report. So here's a here's the checklist for the radon mitigation system. This is a really good one. Like the inspector shall inspect for these things. And you can say, I inspected hangers, strapping, and other supports, and maybe they're they were inadequately secure, right? I inspected the supports installed more than six feet apart on horizontal runs. I inspected for supports installed more than eight feet apart on vertical runs. So you need to start with something. Standards of practice is the absolute minimum. I'd start there and then use InterNACHI's checklists for certain systems, the roof system, the exterior system, the plumbing system, the hot water tank. We even have a checklist for the refrigerator if you're really into it. And take those items in the checklists and convert them into sentences. Okay. Write those, those sentences in the past tense. Never write in the present tense. Write in the past tense because your observations are in the past and the condition of the home is behind you in the past. You are not writing a written document that conveys that the roof system is currently in good shape. Mm -mm. There is nothing that is is in your report. There's nothing that's present in your report. Well, in relation to your defect observations, everything's in the past. So you're required to report upon things that you observed during the inspection. At the time of the inspection, I observed indications of said defect. And I'll show you why. So let's go to this resource. And oh, so you go to InterNACHI's library, free online library of inspection articles. And that's at nachi.org slash articles, nachi.org slash articles. So you go there. And you do a, a command F, I'm on an Apple, I'm not sure what it is on PC, you find um, past, the word past, and there it is. Inspection reports, past or present tense. And we recommend to help reduce liability, writing your inspection reports in the past tense. And here's a really cool thing. Um, let's see, what was I gonna sh share with you? Past, present, past, present. Uh, uh. Down here. In court, there's a huge advantage for the inspector of having the plaintiff's attorney, the complaint person, stuck quoting past tense statements from your report. If you can get the other side, the complaint, the complainant, the person complaining about you, their attorney, to get stuck quoting past tense statements in your report, 
That's fantastic. When you write something like the roof is in good condition, your client may interpret that as a warranty of some kind, but the attorney will only be able to quote what you wrote, which is written in the past tense. The roof was in good condition at the time of my inspection in the past. I'm not saying anything. Of course, it's leaking now. You know why? Conditions change. <laughs> Things change. <laughs> my observation was back then, months ago. It's leaking now? I bet it is. You know why? Roofs leak. Yeah, and that's a present tense. Okay, so I wanted to go over that with you. We have a huge library of inspection articles and legal documents you may want to check out. Let's close some of these tabs here. All right, we're still live on YouTube. That's exciting. Um, defect recognition and report writing course. I love this course. Go, I'll tell you why. I'll show you why. Go to natchi.org slash, oh, just go to any natchi.org page. Um, at the top, there's a get started. You scroll down that. You have to hold it kind of. And then there's training and education. Click that. It's a link. And then in the search field, you type in um, defect. And there's the course. It pops up. Defect recognition and report writing course. You click that. And you log into the course. This is why I like it. You go to the roof section. And there's pictures. Pictures from inspectors, international inspectors, who have volunteered these pictures and their narratives. So here's Edward from Acorn Home Inspections. There's an there's a, his inspection picture and the narrative, right? Um, let's see. Oh, here's mine. I put mine in there, right? Here's my inspection picture. Here's a defect. And there's my narrative, right? Let's go to the exterior. There's some more exterior pictures, right? And you can look at these pictures and like, how would I say that in a very clear and concise manner, right? And so... Here's one here. Uh, ben Gramico wrote this one. It says, the dryer vent had a screen installed on its exhaust hood at the time of my inspection. I observed this, which makes it prone to clogging and poses a fire hazard. This is a defective installation is not allowed by standards. I, I didn't mention code. Recommend cleaning the dryer vent hose and replacing the screen with an appro approved dryer vent termination with a damper. Okay. So you copy that, command C, and you put that in your report, command P, a V, whatever it is, <laughs> copy paste. You are permitted to steal this stuff. I mean, there's a lot going on in the home inspection industry or just recently about copyrighted material and when somebody wrote this, you know, it turns out, turns out we have, a, we have a suspicion. We have some information. Turns out that uh, we've been sharing these narratives for about, 25 years now. And inspectors have taken our courses and copied these narratives. And then they turned into uh, the founders of software companies and forgot where their narratives came from. <laughs> and they think that it's theirs. And they're telling everybody else that they're copyrighted. So uh, feel free to use internet stuff, especially mine, my stuff. Personally, in my stuff, you can copy paste anything that I have written. Um, and just use it. I don't care. Um, I think I have templates in just about every software. I think, um, yeah. And just if you don't, if I, uh, I'll send you some report narratives, or you can just download them here. Here's some. Uh, I'll get to my reports. You can download my narratives if you wanted to. And in Nachi's narratives, we have sample narratives here. Go to nachi.org/sample-narratives to get sample narratives. And this is thanks to Kenton Shepard. Um, Kenton Shepard has the world's largest library of inspection narratives. And that's Kenton Shepard. Just Google him. He, he comes up. He's a very well-known master inspector, has been doing home inspections forever and writing great reports. And he has shared some really great stuff with InterNACHI to, to give you an idea of sample report narratives. And the thing I like is that he has short versions and long versions. <laughs> you can say short in a, short, a few minutes sentence or a very long, robust paragraph, right? I, I tend to like the short, um, grammatically incorrect phrases, you know? So um, take a look at that, at that URL, natchi.org 
slash sample hyphen narratives. Writing report narratives. So let's go to another article. This is a long URL. I apologize for that, but you can email me for these URLs or take a screenshot right now. Natchee.org slash writing hyphen report hyphen narrative. And this is an article written again by Kenton Shepard and Nick Romico, founder of Internachi. And there are three functions to writing report narrative. There are three, according to these fellas. You have to give an accurate condition identification. You have to identify the condition that you're observing accurately, right? So accurately identify what is going on. What am I inspecting? What is this, right? The second function of a narrative is assessing the condition's severity. So this is what I see. Now, how severe is it? Is it a big problem or a little problem? Is it a cosmetic defect, minor defect, major defect, or material defect? There's a four levels of severity. And then the third function is to transfer liability. You want, you want to get this out of way, out of here. I'm not responsible for the roof leak. Someone else is. I'm not responsible for a hole in the roof. Someone else needs to fix this. Okay. So tell your clients what to do. Quoting code. You should never quote code if you're not a code inspector and you're not doing a, a, home, a code inspection. You quote code if you are ICC certified code inspector and you're doing a code inspection. You quote code. ICC certified, doing a code inspection, quote code. Those two things. If you're not any of those, if, if, if not both of those or either one of those, forget it. Don't. If you're just a home inspector, don't quote code, but use mm, building standards, best practices, uh, manufacturer's recommendations, modern safety standards, general accepted current standards, things like that. So don't quote code. Inspectors should follow the same rules as building codes by providing more information about conditions and situations which carry high liability. But quoting code in a narrative is not a good idea for a home inspector. Home inspections are not code inspections. They're inspections for safety and system defects. For reasons related to liability, it's important to keep those two separate. If an inspector quotes code in a narrative in your inspection report, an attorney may argue that the inspector was performing a code inspection and was responsible for finding all code violations. Oh, you don't want to do that. Well, should inspectors write their own narratives at all? Well, if you do or if you don't, it doesn't matter. What matters is have your business attorney review it. Have your local business attorney review everything that you do, your marketing, everything you say, your marketing and, and your business card and, and your report narratives and your inspection reports and in your letters and your emails and even your email signature. You know, let him or her review everything that you do so that if there's a complaint, they know how to respond. And especially, how what are you saying in your report narratives? Have your attorney just do a quick review, right? Make sure you're not implying that you're giving out a warranty or a guarantee or something like that. Make sure your reports are written in the past tense. So there's some resources for you there. Inspection report samples. I told you I'd give you some inspection report samples to look at, right? So we have uh, a handful of master inspectors who have volunteered to give out their inspection reports so that you can literally copy paste anything you want from them. I wouldn't do that. I don't like copy pasting. I like writing my report narratives in my own language because I speak differently than a lot of other inspectors, right? Um, I use choppy sentences. I say things like good, bad. So I don't want to copy paste what someone else wrote, but I will use it as inspiration and as a reference and as a starting point. So go to natchee.org slash home hyphen inspection hyphen report hyphen samples. It's a long URL, I know, but here they are. So we have sample home inspection reports, right? 
a few home inspection reports written by internationally certified professional inspectors and certified master inspectors. Read them, learn how other inspectors write their observations, and you're permitted to download the reports and use them to improve your own inspection reports. I even have mine here, a couple of mine, okay? DDID. This is something unique to North Carolina, actually. I haven't seen it in other areas, but DDID, I don't know if you've seen it before. It stands for Describe, Determine, Implication, Direction. Describe, you're, I'm describing what I'm doing, right? Determine, I'm determining if this thing that I'm looking at is a, a problem or not. What is going on? I'm determining what is going on. Implication means, is this problem small or big? And direction is I'm giving my clients direction on what to do. DDID. Describe, determine, implication, direction. And here's how you get to that. DDID. It's a very, very short little description. You go to natchee.org slash North Carolina, because it's, I believe it's unique to North Carolina. DDID. I know there are other states that have uh, requirements and what you, you, you are supposed to write. I think Texas is the most restrictive. It's very difficult to write anything creative in Texas. Texas tells you exactly what to write and how to write it. Um, even the, the format and the look of the report is absolutely the same with every inspector. Man, to, to compete in Texas is difficult because not only are you inspecting the same stuff, according to the same standards of practice, but you're writing the same report. So it's really fun to work on marketing in Texas. But go to natchee.org slash North Carolina, one word, North Carolina. And then you click the information from North Carolina. You click Home Inspector Study Guide. You click the Home Inspector Study Guide PDF and you go to page two. Let's do that. Go to natchee.org slash North Carolina. Scroll down a little bit and you get the information from the North Carolina website and you click the link. And then you click the Home Inspector Study Guide right down here. And then you click the Home Inspector Study Guide in PDF form right there. And you go to page two. This is where DDID is described by a state licensing board. It's very short. And I'll read it to you. DDID. D, the first D is describe. Describe the component or system of concern specific to the property inspected. For example, the exterior covering components of a home of, uh, oh, sorry, the exterior covering components of a home, such as brick, veneer versus vinyl or wood siding. So you just, just describe, I have inspected the exterior uh, covering materials and they were vinyl, something like that, right? Determine, determine what's wrong with it. Well, I observed indications of a hole in the siding. You know, is it a, is it leaking? Is it a performance thing? It's not, not doing its job. Is it a defect? If it, is it too short? Is it too tall? Is it too big? Right. What's wrong with it? DD implication, implication is I DDI implication. What can happen if the defect is not addressed? Can it get worse? Will it injure somebody? Is it a safety concern? I inspected the receptacles in the kitchen. I determined um, there are receptacles on the kitchen counter that are not GFCI protected. Implication, this is a safety issue. Fourth D, a uh, third D, fourth item is direction. What should be done? Describe, determine, implication, direction. An electrician is needed to um, make sure all of the kitchen counter receptacles are GFCI protected. Right? Should it be repaired by the homeowner? Should it be monitored, further evaluated by a professional? Is there something that has an immediate need for correction? Is it a safety issue? Is someone going to get hurt? Does it have an adverse impact on the value of the home? Is there some kind of imminent danger? What do you what that's the that's the implication, right? Determination. Give them direction. Get this fixed by a professional. You can even say immediately. 
So you describe, what am I inspecting? Determine, is it a problem? Implication, what kind of problem? Is it a small problem or a really big problem? What happens if, if this doesn't get fixed? And direction, tell them what to do, get it fixed. You can fix it yourself or hire a professional. I really like that from North Carolina. Thanks, North Carolina. Inspection report suggested language. Again, North Carolina put out a nice document about what to say in relation to certain defects. Same thing, go to North Carolina website, click that link to get to the state page. And then you go to uh, standards of practice. That's right. Click standards of practice. And it says, inspection report suggested language. This is from a state licensing board. Here's the suggested report language for adhered masonry stone veneer cladding. Boom. They want you to use this language in your reports. Here's what you can say if you observe aluminum branch circuit wiring. Boom. There's like a couple levels. One's basic, one's hazardous. Here's something you can say if you find CSST bonding problem, right? The corrugated stainless steel. Here's one about deck connections or EFs or electrical panels, Zinsco, if they're still around. Federal Pacific, Stablock. How about mold? What do you say if you find mold, right? How about radon mitigation system? Ah, so these are uh, PB pipe. So these are suggested narratives from a licensing board. I really like that. Thanks, North Carolina. All right, let's take a look at um, our topics. We did chat GBT, inspect describe report, free inspection checklist software. I really like that inspection checklist, writing report narratives in the past tense. Defect recognition report writing course, that's a good one. Internet use narrative samples, we had that. Report writing narratives, yep, from Kenton and, and Nick Romico. Quoting code, right? Um, oh, the writing report narratives, the three main reasons to write a report narrative. And uh, North Carolina has four. Um, should inspectors write their own narratives? Make sure your attorney uh, reviews it. Inspection report samples, I love that resource where you can actually look at master inspector reports. DDID from North Carolina and suggested language from North Carolina. That was really good. I like those topics. Let's take a look at, um, are you all chatting? Let's see if we have any questions. Um, does internet actually have a template report form with these checklists he's suggesting? Yeah, so we went over that, right? We went over the templates and the narratives. Is there a way to increase the video resolution? Oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, is there a mobile checklist? Yes, the um, Internet -E inspection checklist software uh, works on mobile. Um, it works better on desktop, right? Um, Ohio, you have to be licensed by the Ohio Department of Health to inspect and radon mitigation systems. Right. Um, uh, I would include um, some comments about the radon mitigation system in my home inspection report as well. Um, I'm not doing um, a radon uh, test. Um, but I'm commenting on this um, pipe. So if I see um, a defect that comes up that's related to the electrical system that I'm inspecting during my home inspection, and it's related, you know, those electrical switches, they're never any good for uh, radon mitigation systems. They're always like twisted in, you know, you can, they're out of the box. That's a defect, right? It's related to powering the radon mitigation fan, but I'm commenting on that because I see it, it's a defect, it's electrical hazard, could be a fire hazard, could hurt somebody. I'm not gonna keep my mouth shut because uh, something about doing a radon test is regulated. Nope, I'm gonna inspect this. Um, I'm gonna inspect, there's a lot, as a home inspector, remember we're not code inspector, but there's a lot of overlap. You know, I could argue that the electrical connection to the radon mitigation fan is part of my home inspection. I'd absolutely, uh, argue that because I'm on the side of protecting people. Um, let's see. 
Spectora Gene on Spectora, you can look at other people's templates. They are report writing and it actually has a template there, some narratives included there, some in adjustment. Yeah, so my inspection report template, um, I asked Kevin from Inspector, Spectora to make sure that there was no problems with my template. I have an email saying that he did and there were no problems with my template in the um, template community of Spectora. Um, using Excel better than software reports. Um, I like using, I, I did, I made a lot of money um, using Word and autocorrect. I can show you that. I think I have a video on that. Um, no need to, no need to get fancy. We did thousands of reports using autocorrect in Word, Microsoft Word. Um, Texas is specific, but how inspections are completed. Yep. Um, is there a link to Florida for specific report items? Trying to find, yes. Go to natchee.org slash Florida, natchee.org slash Florida and scroll down to, um, yeah, if you're if you're anywhere, just go to natchee.org slash whatever, natchee.org slash Oklahoma, natchee.org slash Florida, natchee.org slash New York, one word, um, and, type, and get more site-specific information. And if you can't find it, um, I can help you, okay? Let's see, questions. Um, I'm a new inspector. Is it appropriate to use the general term licensed qualified professional or should we be more specific as suggested? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not sure what the question is. So if you are in an area that regulates home inspectors, you have to get that, um, you have to be in compliance with the, the local rules, right? And if they are if it's Florida, they license, I'm a Florida licensed home inspector. I can say I'm a Florida licensed home inspector. And if I'm not licensed in a state that regulates home inspector, you can't do a home inspection. You can't even say that you're a home inspector. Okay. So it's up to the code. Uh, this, that is crazy. How much of that is pulled from internet? I don't know. Um, probably, you know, chat GBT uses internet. -y. Um, I don't know. What is the best report signing software? I've used them. I've used a, a handful, literally like four or five. Um, and um, you can just email me and I can give you my opinion. But, you know, the, the big ones are out there. What is that? Home Inspector Pro, Home Gauge, Spectora. And then there's good things I've heard about other softwares out there, but I haven't used them. Um, is there a pre-drywall inspection checklist? Yes. Um, just email me. I can find it for you. Um, what are your thoughts on using verbiage inspected versus observed looked at? Um, whatever, whatever you use in your inspection report, you can um, preface in your report. Like for clarity and being concise, these terms are used by me in my inspection report. I use the term observed, which means but you can go to natchee.org slash glossary, natchee.org slash glossary, and look up, you know, what, what does uh, inspect mean, right? So like um, you can look up, oh, there's go, go defect, look up defect. Terms matching defect, there are the four, <laughs> okay? Um, what did you put? I don't know if this is defined. What? Oh, I, I just answered. What did you have? Looked. I don't think the word looked is in there. I don't think that's in the look. Oh, there it is. Oh, look out. Oh, well. So you can use the natchee.org slash glossary to help you define the terms that you use. But again, if they're not plain English, a common language terminology, I wouldn't put it in the report. I would use it so that your reports are easy to read and clear to understand. Um, will you please share how to find your inspection report template again? Um, well, I have report templates in probably all of the softwares. Um, you can just ask them for my report template. Um, it's in Spectora community for sure. And then to find my inspection reports, let's go to that URL. It's here, natchee.org slash sample hyphen narratives. Oh, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Oh, sorry. Here, Ugh, it's a longer URL. Here's the report samples. natchee.org slash home 
hyphen inspection, hyphen report samples. And here's where you'll find my inspection reports and other reports, as well as a ton of other uh, resources, right? Even commercial report samples. We have report samples for inspecting commercial buildings. So here's some um, sample inspection reports. Um, here's a commercial property inspector offering their narratives to you. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, be sure to review, be careful on how it's phrased. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, it's not gonna make sense to your clients, right? And careful with copy pasting someone else's words. I don't like putting someone else's words in my mouth. Um, I inspect in a certain way. And while I'm inspecting, I'm saying things to my clients. And the way I talk is exactly how I write. So it's very familiar. My inspection reports should be very familiar to my clients because they've heard what I just said. So what I say in the inspection process while my clients are following me, I actually write that type of language, informal, creative, not grammatically correct sentences in my inspection report, okay? I don't try to be uh, anything more than I am in my inspection reports. So I, I write what I say and I say what I mean. And I think that's what I wanted to share with y'all. Thank you so much. I wanna leave with you with a couple URLs. There are, <clears throat> ready? Guess how many people work for you? 30. There are 30 people who work for you. And we're all on InterNACHI's contact page. And they're working for you right now. You can ask anybody on InterNACHI staff, what can you do to help me run a successful home inspection business? And they'll help you. You can't possibly pay 30 people to work today, Friday, November 10th, on your business. But you can if you're a member of InterNACHI. And that is the greatest resource InterNACHI has. There are good, hardworking people trying to help you be successful. And we're all on the contact page. Feel free to contact us. Register for the, for the next webinar at natchiorg slash webinars. Go to natchiorg slash everything. There's a page that I put. I try to put everything that you need on this one page, natchiorg slash everything, and get a good website that's affordable low overhead, no monthly payments, natchi.org slash website. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here and registering for a live webinar at InterNACHI webinars, natchi.org slash webinar. And thanks for joining us uh, live on YouTube. All right. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. See you later. <laughs>